be in Moscow, but I'm so happy that we actually made it to Moscow. Because, you know, with that cloud from Iceland, yeah, a difficult story, a difficult story. Yeah, yeah. But we made it. And are you excited? Yeah. We're going to be showing you in the next hour or so everything that is the cool new features in, uh, in Creative Suite uh, 5 Master Collection. First, I want to show you when I create a new page in an InDesign document, here we have the cover of a magazine. But imagine that I want to create a class for that magazine. What I can do now is simply go here into the menu or use my um, keyboard shortcut to do that to insert pages. And I will, ask, uh, I, will, I will add a page after page one, like so. And it comes right next to it. Okay, the pages are together, and now I can start working with it. But what I really needed was a shorter page. So with this new tool here that we have in the toolbar, the page tool, I can now select that page and give that page the exact dimension that I need. So uh, let's say I want this at 10 centimeters and go and done, okay? So finally in InDesign, we have the possibility to have multiple page sizes in a single document. So that's great for magazines, that's great for book covers, that's great if you're working on a stationery with business cards, letterheads, and things like that. And then of course I can continue working with that object and select my, my image here and start dragging it over and preparing my cover. And the cool thing is that when I print this or I create the uh, a PDF for print, I will get all the little crop marks on the sides. Let's move on. Let me go to another uh, page here and show you some cool new features that, uh, that will make it so much faster for you to actually place images inside of an InDesign document. Let's move over here to this page here on the side. And new in InDesign CS5 and Photoshop CS5 is Mini Bridge. Bridge is the asset management system that we have in the Creative Suite. And it is now inside of the application. So I don't even need to go to Bridge anymore. Because from Mini Bridge, I can select my images, for example these, and pull them over into my document. And then what I will do, click and drag for the first image. And with my, with my other fingers here, I'm doing nothing else with this hand. I'm simply going to add with my arrows how many images are here. Okay, and just with a simple motion like this, I have placed four images inside of my InDesign document. Is that pretty cool? Yeah. Yeah? Wait, it gets even cooler, because now I will, auto, I, will, um, I will fit those images inside of the frames, and I will auto-fit them. This is also new in InDesign CS5. Auto-fit the images. And you will see in a second uh, what that actually means. Also, when I hover over the images, you will notice that now we have a little donut here. And that donut actually allows me, without having to click anything else, just to move the images inside of the frame, okay? Without having to actually select them with the direct selection tool or triple click on the, uh, on the image frame, etc. Also here, I would like to move this up a little bit. And then, let me present you another new tool. And then this tool is called the Gap Tool. And it can be accessed also with the simple letter U. Let me show you how that works. Let's go here, use the Gap Tool here, and change the size of these images. Very, very quickly. No, no, wow. I can, press, I can press other modifier keys and decide that I want these images to be bigger. And if I press the control key here, uh, I can move the, I can, oh, the alt key, I can move the whole, the whole column. Or the command key, I can decide how much space I need between these, uh, these images. Perfect. Next thing I want to show you is this. That when you select an image now, you will have a little icon on the side here. This here. This looks very strange, okay? But if we click on it, we have four little diamonds on the corner. And what this allows me to do without no scripts, without going to the menus, I can simply click and drag and create rounded corners. Yeah. <laughs> and then if I press control, control shift, I can change uh, alt click, I can change the style of just one corner, or if I click shift down here and I want this to be 
straight, I can just change this corner. So do that just intuitively on the images right there on the, uh, on the page. And I can also have maybe flash video in it. Okay. Oh, it's real flash video. It's, it's real flash time. video. It's not quick time. It's not quick time. Oh. And then it's two hours of flash. Yeah. And how, how do you think I made this? With Flash CS5 Professional? Yeah, maybe. With? At what? I didn't hear that. <laughs> I didn't understand it. Um, I did it all of that inside of InDesign. Okay, all the animation, all the movies, all the sound. So let me show you how, how I could do that. Let's go here to InDesign and let's say that maybe I want to animate this text to fly in. Okay, so what I would, the first thing I would do is go into my interactive workspace to get all of my interactive tools. So I have this object here and I want to animate it. And I'm going to zoom in here for a second just to show you all the things that I can do. And basically what I can do is choose from a whole bunch of presets. Okay, animation presets. These are the same animation presets that we find in Flash. Let me zoom out. And maybe I, let's, let's check some, maybe bounce, bounce vertical. And we have a preview up here, point, point. Maybe smoke. Is it here? All right, I'll do that to butterflies. And, uh, yeah, don't do that to butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go back here. And well, basically what I want to do, I just want to have it fly in from the top. Okay? And basically what happens inside of my document is that I now have even a motion path for that. And in this I did all that for me. I can even see the proxy, see where it comes from. I can select the motion path with my selection tool and then take my drawing tools here and add maybe a point here and have the animation actually fly in like that. And then you would ask me, Rupert, but how do I see how this animation actually works? In the past, we have to export it to, um, uh, to actually be able to look at it in the, in the web browser. Now, we can simply go to the preview panel, clicking here. Then let's make the panel slightly bigger. Okay. All right, perfect. Let's make the panel a little bit bigger, like this, so we can all see it. And reload it. And here's my text flying in, in the end. Okay, like this. My little flies start flying here. Let me zoom in, it's pretty cool. That's an animation that, that I made in, in a design. Okay. Man, right. did you smoke? Yeah. <laughs> and then, whoa, my little text came. Okay? Of course, all of these things can be planned. Because as you can see, the text flew in last. And I want maybe the text to come first. So then all I need to do is go into my timing panel here, take the live headline, and pull it up. Okay? And say it should start here. And then I can take the three flies and say, you flies should start all together. Not one, and then second and first. And I can group them together. And very, very easily also time whatever I have to do in that panel. Let me just show you one last quick thing here with these images. Um, to show you how easy it has become also to create image galleries inside of uh, InDesign. This is something that will take much more time also in InDesign CS4. But in CS5, all I need to do is select my images and align them together. I'm uh, quickly going to open the Align panel under, where is it? Object Layout, Align, and I will align the objects very quickly so that they are on top of each other. And then I will use the new object state panel. And I will create an object state for these images. Basically what it does, it takes all of those images together and puts them inside of a single element. And then I will call this gallery, like this. And I'm done. Next thing I need to do is take one of those buttons here and say, you are a button. Okay, so let's select out here. This must be a button. So I'll open my button panel here. I add an action. Go to next state, for example, and then I go into my preview panel and let me zoom in. Let's look at one last time. Oh, my text zoomed in. Perfect. My slides all fly together. Okay. And look at what I did here. I created a button and I can go through the images. Really cool.